The Demon Drink by William McGonagall O oh, thou demon drink, thou fell destroyer, thou curse of society and its greatest annoyer. What hast thou done to society? Let me think. I answer thou hast caused the most of ills, thou demon drink. Thou causest the mother to neglect her child, also the father to act as if he were wild, so that he neglects his loving wife and family dear by spending his earnings foolishly on whiskey, rum, and beer. And after spending his earnings foolishly, he beats his wife, the man that promised to protect her during life, and so the man would, if there was no drink in society. For seldom a man beats his wife in a state of sobriety. And if he does, perhaps he finds his wife foul. Then that causes no doubt a great hullabaloo. When he finds his wife drunk, he begins to frown, and in a fury of passion, he knocks her down. And in that knockdown, she fractures her head, and perhaps the poor wife, she is killed dead. Whereas if there was no strong drink to be got, to be killed wouldn't have been the poor wife's lot. But then the unfortunate husband is arrested and cast into jail, and sadly his fate he does bewail, and he curses the hour that ever was born, and paces his cell up and down very forlorn. And when the day of his trial draws near, no doubt for the murdering of his wife, he drops a tear, and he exclaims, Oh, the demon drink, through thee I must die. And on the scaffold he warns the people from drink to fly. Because whenever a father or a mother takes a drink, step by step, or in crime they do sink, until their children loses all affection for them, and in justice we cannot their children condemn. The man that gets drunk is little else than a fool, and is in the habit, no doubt, of advocating for home rule. But the best home rule for him, as far as I can understand, is the abolition of strong drink from the land. And the man that get drunk in general wants home rule. But such men I rather think should keep their heads cool and try and learn more sense. I most earnestly do pray and help to get strong drink abolished without delay. If drink was abolished, how many peaceful homes would there be, just for instance in the beautiful town of Dundee? Then this world would be heaven, whereas it's a hell, and the people would have more peace in it to dwell. Alas, strong drink makes men and women fanatics, and helps to fill our prisons and lunatics. And if there was no strong drink, such cases wouldn't be, which would be a very glad sight for all Christians to see. Oh, admit, a man may be a very good man, but in my opinion he cannot be a true Christian as long as he partakes of strong drink, the more that he may differently think. But no matter what he thinks, I say nay, for by taking it he helps to lead his brother astray. Whereas if he didn't drink, he would help to reform society, and we would soon do away 
with all inebriety. Then for the sake of society and the church of God, let each one try to abolish it at home and abroad. Then poverty and crime would decrease and be at a stand, and Christ's kingdom would soon be established throughout the land. Therefore, brothers and sisters, pause and think, and try to abolish the foul fiend drink. Let such doctrine be taught in church and school, but the abolition of strong drink is the only home rule.